I wanted to give you a brief overview of a couple tools that we have been developing at CIB um, from the last time we saw each other over a year ago. So as you might remember, um, a few years ago we launched the Atlas of Economic Complexity, which made feasible for the first time to visually navigate vast amounts of economic data in a way that will allow us to understand the sources of growth of every country and the possibilities of a diversification. We've continued um, to add to this tool. If you remember, what the Atlas does is allows you to visualize a thousand products um, and um, for the last 65 years uh, for 120 countries. Not only to understand the, the, the trends in trade, but also to, look, to be able to visualize the opportunities for growth for each of these countries. So we've continued to add to the Atlas, and some of the new things are that we have cleaned and updated data up to 2014. And we've also created new uh, visualizations, such as this one, which is um, just an interactive ranking of complexity through time, so that you can see the trajectory of countries through time. Like you know, China and its vast ascent in its complexity rankings, and other countries like Brazil, who have more of a slow descent in their complexity. So, so this is the Atlas. Um, and for some of you, it might be new. One is called the Globe of Economic Complexity, which gives, which was started by Owen Corner, um, who worked with us over the summer. And this is a really compelling 3D visualization that allows us to zoom out and see trade at a global scale. So let me quick, quickly give you a couple, um, a couple of the things that it can do. Oh, so. I seize control. So think of a product, um, like a watch, right? And what the, what the globe does is every pixel is actually $100 million in trade, which is the equivalent of, of you know, 150,000 watches. And we can look at, um, at every product, and every color is a different product for the rest, uh, for regions of the world. So this, for example, is exports in Europe, of you know, in, in every industry, and every color allows you to to see, you know, you know what exports Europe, what Europe exports compared to, let's say, Eurasia. We can also see this at a global scale. This shows you the partners of every country, and a global scale. This is the world, and you get to when we chose a couple products. The blue pro, the blue pixels are machinery, which by now you know is the kind of complex product that brings wealth to countries compared to the yellow, which are agricultural exports. So in one quick picture, you can see you know, where in the globe wealth is created. So the whole website is interactive. And uh, you can rotate. This is the, the, the product space in 3D. And you can see the, the, the whole globe and, um, and trade flows between it. And lastly, let me just show you the um, the product space. You can see the product space in a 3D visualization. So very quickly, you can see which are the products that dominate world trade. So those, you know, high uh, high spikes there are oil. Uh, this one in the middle is cars and computers. So anyway, I hope uh, I hope that you get a chance to uh, to play with this. The Globe has actually won CID a bunch of uh, uh, several design awards. But most importantly, what, uh, what we've enjoyed is that it's allowed a much broader audience that wasn't our usual audience to be interested and excited about, uh, about our research. So um, we've also, and um, in the breaks, if you want to explore any of these tools, there's going to be people outside to be able to show you. So the second set of tools that we built in the last year has, have allowed us to zoom in. And we've created uh, two sub-national atlases in Colombia and Mexico and soon to come Peru to help people in these countries accelerate growth, growth at the micro level, at the city level, and at the municipal level. So let me give you a couple of visuals from the Colombian atlas um, and the kind of questions that we, can, that we can answer with it. So we can answer questions we were never able to do uh, in the international atlas, right? Like what, uh, what industries in Bogota employ the most people in, in the city? And we can also still ask, what kind of industries or products does this city export? We can also look at the product space at the city level, at the municipal level. And you can see in the case of Bogota, 
um, that uh, that it has clusters in, in, in low complexity industries such as vegetables, textiles, and printed goods. And it also has a set of more complex industries such as machinery, vehicles, chemicals. And you can choose a product within, uh, within the product space and say, well, if I know that chemicals is a high complexity product, let me understand if I make in Bogota packaged medicines, what other products are likely to be attached to that product that share the same cap capabilities in that environment so that if I were to enter in these industries, I'm likely to succeed, right? And those are the nodes that are uh, attached to um, packaged medicaments. Then we also have a visualization that allows you to see in a simple two by two matrix what, what are all the products that Bogota does not currently make, and this is a, a, uh, a picture of all the products it doesn't make, and how complex those products are and how close they are to the current set of capabilities that that city possesses, which means things on this side tend to be easier and less risky in that environment. So if, you say, if we say, OK, let's look at just chemicals and what's interesting in the chemical industry, you, know, you can choose a product like ketones and quinones, which I also don't know what they mean, but there are some organic compounds, and say, OK, if I wanted to invest in that product, how it will increase the complexity of, um, of my product basket, but it's also feasible. And if I enter there, I can even look at which are the uh, states or departments in, in Colombia that currently import that product. So that if I were to enter, which will be my ready markets, like Bogota imports $10 million of this product. So this is just a couple, um, a couple of, of, of visuals of the kind of things you can do. And this is the last one I wanted to show you that is exciting because every time that we um, presented the International Atlas, somebody always you know, intelligently asked, well, what about services? Can't a country or a city grow investing in its services? It's a huge employment source and whatnot. And now, because at the subnational level, because of the data that we've been able to gather, we've created the industry space. So you now can see all the services and industries at, uh, at, the, at the city level. And this is an example for Medellin, where you can see that you know, it has strengths in a variety of industries, banking, technology, but also on this one, which is computer consultancy. And you know, similarly to the ones in products, you can see that if you are good in this service, you are likely to also be successful in data processing and data activities. And the, the way that we've mapped this space is by labor flows. So people who, um, who, are, who work in a certain industry who tend to also, in other places, work in these other industries. So anyway, this is just to say that we have also, um, this is one visual from the Mexican Atlas. So we have also done, um, done the same, uh, well, the same and, dif and, and a different atlas for Mexico, depending on the databases that, uh, that, uh, that we got. But we have ambitious plans of the kind of tools that we want to be building in the future. Like I said, we've done Mexico, Colombia. You're about to see the one in, uh, in Peru in the coming months. But in the future, we want to work, continue to work on the international atlas include skills and capabilities. We also want to be able to create a tool that allows us to visualize the growth diagnostics methodology, which is a methodology that allows countries to understand their binding constraints to growth and allocate resources effectively. And we're also partnering with, uh, with people around the room, with MasterCard and Telefonica, to, to be able to make sense of massive amounts of data. And we hope to build a tool that can help us visualize the transfer of know-how between countries so that countries can understand what could they do to, uh, to accelerate this kind of uh, knowledge accumulation. So you're going to hear a little bit more uh, throughout the day about some of these tools and how we're using them. But, uh, but to end, I want to say, I mean, I'm very excited about this kind of, these kind of tools and what we're doing. But it's hard um, because no one has done it before, right? We are using, ta -da, we are using um, data that has never been visualized in this way. And we're not visualization experts. We are you know, researchers. So I just want to you know, take this time to thank everybody that has made this possible. Right? For Colombia and Mexico, we've partnered with Bancoldex, with the Fundación Santo Domingo, with the team of uh, Minister Videgaray. And only working together hand in hand is that we were able to create these tools and make them usable. 
you know, we've had a lot of our research fellows who worked hard to make sense of imperfect data. And uh, our development team, who we have here, Mali and Greg, who had to you know, try to visualize this massive amount of data in ways that were, uh, were intuitive. And, and, and you know, most importantly, we had uh, people in this room who supported us throughout you know, this whole endeavor, where we, which we didn't know where it was going to lead. And these were the founding members of the Atlas who have supported us to not only create the Atlas and these tools, and Alejandro Santo Domingo, who supported our research, and, uh, and who allow us to create these tools and make them available for free uh, to the world. So um, I'm very excited with what's coming at CID. And again, I want to thank you all for continuing to support us and for being here to help us improve, apply, and generate the ideas um, that we're working on.